Hello Internet. I have this little tiny um, Tesla T4. As a matter of fact, I have two of them. So this one I already fixed. It had a... This transistor here. Let me zoom in. Enhancement MOSFET. Dual package. This little guy there. So that was shorted. It was shorted on... I think it was shorted on this pin. Uh, which I was able to trace to, I think, to, to the input, to the second input of this U-gate. Subsequently, the, uh, the enable signal for uh, 1.8 was originating at this uh, INA3221 chip. So that would be an output. So it was going out, and then it was going into um, either the input one or the... I don't know. It's, it was all confusing. So the bottom line is, or maybe, or maybe this was the input to enable this. I, I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, the bottom line is, uh, I had no output on this uh, U-gate because the uh, the second input was uh, pulled down to the ground. So what I ended up doing is I removed this guy, I soldered a wire to the second pin, gave it a 1 volt, and then this guy started to glow. So I threw this away, and, uh, and we're all good. So, this other card here, on the other hand, works. Uh, it, it worked right out of the box, with the exception of... I'll show you what it does when we go into Windows. And I have never seen these cards before, though I've seen similar ones, like an A6000, I think. Uh, but this uh, a f this is a Tesla T4, so little little different. Not in terms of the way it's built or anything, uh, but in terms of the troubleshooting, diagnosing, all that kind of stuff. Just a little different. Let's go into Windows and see what the device manager says. See, I thought to myself, I need to install special drivers, uh, which uh, one of my admins uh, recommended me to do. That did not help. So uh, a regular uh, driver package was able to recognize this card with absolutely no issues. So it says device code start uh, whatever, code 10. So it doesn't work. And it says insufficient system resources exits exit to complete the API. Exist. Not enough. So basically not enough resources to uh, do something. Uh, I don't really know what that means. A lot of people complain uh, about this problem online. Uh, at least enough uh, for this uh, problem to be uh, uh, well known around the, uh, these 3D specially designed uh, GPUs. Uh, I can't even call them GPUs because they do not even have a video output anyway. Um, but, so... And so I ended up running uh, running a memory test using my regular package, uh, and I usually run uh, I run a memory test that I thought was supporting the core. So I ran uh, 455 127 I think, and um, it gave me an error on B1. Uh, so I removed the B1, started a new one. The error is still there. Then um, I rebuild the core, thinking there was a um, bad solder joint. Uh, and as a matter of fact, <laughs> I rebuilt the core three times because there were gray pads under the core. The PCB had a little bit of twist uh, for whatever reason, and then as a result, the core was uh, refusing to establish connection with the pads that are at the bottom left corner right near the oscillator crystal. Actually, the crystal is on the back, uh, but it was in that general area where it does make the connection to the crystal. Uh, through the vias and uh, channels and whatnot. And so it refused to get uh, uh, soldered to that area of the board. And so uh, I ended up giving it a little bit of a twist to the PCB, solder it down, and um, uh, got it working. But doesn't matter. Uh, it was the exact same error on B1. So my uh, one of my admins... Uh, recommended me to try a different version of mods. See, there we have a D1 error. Let's open this thing up. And hopefully that error 10 will go away. I got new paste in there and everything. Ugh. It's so gooey. This is that that uh, GD2 that I'm switching to now. I I really like it, but it's kind of gooey, you know. It's kind of gooey, 
But at the very least, it doesn't run out uh, like the uh, MX-4 does sometimes. I don't know. Sometimes MX-4 runs out. I've seen it happen uh, at least a couple of times. A customer would send me their GPU back for warranty because it starts to overheat. And then I would have to redo it. And the poor customer had to pay shipping. So, ABCD. D1, she says. Which one's, uh, where's my Sharpie of Death? The marker of death. So it, it gave me B1, so I started changing this chip. Then, I still it still gave me a, a B1 error. Then I replaced, then I removed this chip to see if I'm going to get an error on B0. And I did not. So I was like, my memory, uh, must uh, software probably doesn't recognize this card properly. But, but for whatever reason, it was giving me errors, just not in the right place. So we need D1. So A, B, C, D1. So it's this guy. So let's go ahead and replace this guy. Uh, I think I already have... Yeah, I already have one chip here to re for a replacement. So let's do that and see if the error code 10 will go away. All right, chip is replaced. Let's see. Let's double check the resistances in the memory. Make sure we don't have any shorts. 1.8, PEX, 12, and 5. All right. Make sure all the pads are there. Yeah, looks good. It's very strange, you would think, error code 10. Why would it why would it not give you an error code 43 for example? Why does it have to be 10? Uh, probably because it's a very strange GPU. So let's power it on. See if we can run a memory test. Nope, it still reports the exact same errors on the exact same chip. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this. So what I want to do now is um, I got the chip removed and I want to make sure that uh, all the data pads connect to the core because my suspicion is that uh, given the fact that I had to reboil the core several times because uh, the PCB was had a little bit of twist and the core was not sitting flat uh, not only that I also noticed that there were some uh, oxidized pads specifically in this area here which could explain the lack of connection between the chip and the core so if we uh, confirm that then uh, we can try reflow uh, though I don't really like reflow that much, uh, uh, we might have to reboil one more time. So let's go ahead and check. So I didn't have to go very far, and I found that uh, I think either this or this, this. So I found that this pad here does not contact, does not make its way. To, uh, under the core. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the core, make sure that that contact is actually making its way all the way down to the, uh, all the way across the traces uh, to the pad under the core. Okay, so the core is out. Now we need to find where that pad that was refusing to contact the core is located. So that pad is right there. And as you would expect, um, I don't know if you can see this, but this pad looks a little bit gray. I think you can see this. Let me let me go ahead and look. Zoom in closer so you can clearly see what the problem is. And that problem is manufacturing, ladies and gentlemen. You see that pad? There. See how kind of sort of gray it is? That's what I call, that's what we uh, call in the industry a gray pad. And a gray pad is nothing but a pad that got oxidized for, um, for whatever reason. It, it oxidation uh, layer had built on top of this pad and um, as a result the uh, flux, uh, the um, solder refuses to adhere it, it acts almost like a repellent it's it's almost like a like a hydrophobic spray you know 
except that this time it repels solder like crazy. So the way to fix this is obviously to uh, tin this pad like so. Then we can wick this off and the uh, pad should be good to go for a second round of reball. Actually it's gonna be a fourth round. I don't know anymore. This card had so many gray pads it's ridiculous. I even went as far as polishing a whole bottom of it. See now it looks more or less the same like the rest of them. The, this whole bottom here, this whole corner here, it, it was all gray pads. So you can see these pads here, let me show you, hold on a sec. This pad and this pad, they were all grayed as well, so I had no contact with the uh, oscillator. And then we had some gray pads here. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that's it. I'll go ahead and reball the core, reball the, the memory chip, and uh, put it all back where it belongs and uh, try again and see if that helps. Okay, we're back. The reball is complete. The original memory chip is soldered back. I have no idea whether or not it's connecting to that pad or not, but we're going to find out soon. And uh, just making sure that we don't have any shorts. And I think we're okay. Let's go ahead and power it on since we had it reballed by the uh, regulated power supply and make sure that everything works fine. And according to my meter here we're pulling 0 0.8 amp just under one amp on a cold card that's that's usually an indicator that it is working so let's put this thing on the stands and plug it in and run a memory test and hopefully this time it will pass all right we have a pass all right so oh, let's open up the device manager wait for the driver to automatically pick up should be error code 18 waiting for the driver reinstallation since we are now connected through a riser so we changed the port and the driver has to now install and there we have it we now have the device working properly uh, we can open up the gpu z to confirm we can also run a command uh, NVIDIA-SMI, I believe, yep, there we go, we have all the stats indicating that the device is working, and we have all of the other things indicating that the device is indeed working, right there. So that will be it for this repair, I hope you guys have learned something out of this video, if so, please hit me with a like, comment below and uh, don't forget to subscribe for more repairs thank you for watching goodbye